Hello, my name's Tracy from Art Fibre Stitch. I do a lot of eco dyeing, and right now the wattles are blooming. And it's only this one time of year, so I saw these by the side of the road and I brought some home to have a bit of an experiment with. So many different varieties. Look at that tiny little small ones, big bobbly pretty ones. Um, all the leaves are different on them too. Look at this one, a sage green little round leaf and big strappy leaves on, on another and fern kind of leaves. It's um, certainly got a lot of variety and I don't know what it will do, but I am wanting to have a play and I thought you might like to see how I go about it. So first things first, I select a few fabrics. I've got linens and cottons, different thicknesses, slightly different colours, and I'm just wetting them. Now I'm laying out the first one, this lovely big, with big circular pom-pom kind of flowers on it. What I'm going to use as the mordant, which makes it stay, the, all of the tannins and the, and the different elements in the flowers or leaves will um, colour the fabric and stay there. So you need a mordant. And the mordant in this case is something I've made a long time ago and it's just been sitting around. So it was rust and it was a copper stuff that I had soaking in uh, vinegar and water. And then I left it. I had two separate things and I joined them together at the end and I thought well it's an experiment. So here I am dipping it in. I tried painting it on with a paintbrush. There's different ways to do this. This particular experiment now we're going to dip the different uh, foliage into the mordant and just see what that does. It might all turn out dreadfully. And here I am sprinkling a little bit more of the mordant on, just here and there. I, I know the rust mordant works beautifully and I've gotten some lovely rust coloured ones. But I just thought I'd try something with the, you know, the copper stuff that I've been making. Now I will say here, please don't do what I do and just jump on in and forgot, forget to put gloves on because it really is important to look after yourself. And you end up with stained hands. And I really don't know. They say that um, the chemical, um, not the chemicals, are, um, you know, there is a certain toxicity when you use um, the powdered uh, copper sulfate. Making your own is not meant to be as toxic. And I've certainly got it watered down a lot. So I don't think it's a problem. But please always wear your gloves. All right, so I lay them out, I fold it over, and then I grab a stick. This stick I grabbed had a bit of um, lichen on it. I thought, oh, you never know what that will do. And here I, I'm folding it over and rolling it up tight. Now I've grabbed a different kind, and this has a tiny little leaf and these beautiful, delicate sprays of flowers rather than the pom-pom shape. And so here I've grabbed some white linen you can see the previous one was more of a, a beigey colour. And this time, oh, once again, put your gloves on. Um, yeah, so on this one here, I am just pouring some on. And then um, we'll just see what that does. Oh, and now I'm sort of sponging it through, I guess, you know, giving it a bit of a press to, to distribute the mordant a little bit. And now we'll do the same where we lay it out and we'll just arrange some of these things on there and see. There's no telling what's going to happen. Am I going to end up with any yellow? Well, I do hope so, but you know, maybe not. I don't know whether wattle is something that does that, oh, but it doesn't matter. Just experimenting with um, some lovely uh, nature that we've found by the side of the road. So I grabbed a great, a great arm load, I must say, of all these different varieties. Kept stopping the car just to grab samples of each. So 
So this is the process. I am, sometimes I take the flowers off and I sprinkle all the leaves. See, I've shredded the leaves. That's sort of like sprinkling the herbs on a pizza or something, isn't it? It's uh, just trying, trying different things. I don't know what's going to happen. But that's what's exciting because by the time I'm finished and I get to see it, you know, I, there will be something I like. It might not all be a success, but it doesn't matter. I can use this same fabric to have another go. And like I said, I've had a lot of success with the rust water, uh, making things, um, yeah, doing some dyeing that uses the rust mordant from, I have plenty of rusty things that I can soak in the vinegar and water mixture. But this one with the element of copper, I'm hoping it will bring more colour because the rust tends to just make things black. Mm, um, you know, the tannins from the eucalyptus leaves, etc. come out all black. So I'm just experimenting. Can you see on this one here, I'm going to end up with a nice little flat package because I've used a bit of bark. Here are another three kinds of wattle that I found today. Look at that with those lovely sage green kind of leaves. This one here has a feathery kind of leaf and a light yellow colour flower. And this one had these long thin flowers and these lovely big leaves. So I'm going to try them all and we'll see what they do. So on this one I'm sprinkling some of the mordant through. The fabric's damp anyway so it will travel. Oh, honestly I don't know what's going to happen but mm, it'll be fun. Fun no matter what. So I go about arranging these things making sure there's some sprays and some single leaves. Then I fold it, then I find something interesting to wrap it around, normally something natural like a stick or a bit of bark or whatever. Those things also will cover, uh, color the fabric sometimes, so you don't know. It might produce just the right thing. These have got the most delicious little balls on them and I'm hoping that they will give me a, a lovely imprint and a very feathery leaf. I find it strange that all of these plants um, are called wattle, but so very different. Okay, here we're going to use the big strappy leaves now and see what it does. I didn't have very many flowers on this. This is that long, thin flower. So I'm going to use a few other things on there as well and see, just see what happens. Yeah, I'm sprinkling on some of the mordant, very wet fabric, that, so hopefully that will travel. Um, now what am I going to add here? I just sort of think, oh yes, I've got an old banksia cone, a, a dried banksia uh, flower, and it's got all of these little, little uh, stamen kind of things that hang off a central core, and I'm just picking bits off and sprinkling it. I don't know what it will do. It might do nothing. It might add colour. It might add a little line. I don't know. And a nice piece of bark in there. That actually quite works quite well on the bark because you end up with a, a flatter pa uh, package. It's much easier to fit it into your pans at the end. So I have a long piece of material here. You can see I just did some and then I, I wrapped it up and brought more on the table and now I'm trying it again, maybe with something else this time. Yep, I'm using some of the other flowers and those lovely sprigs and different leaves and just happy to try something in each section, something different. So as I continue this here, let's just have a little word about um what happens next so i have some steamers this is what i do i steam it um once it's wrapped like that then we will tie it up 
into lovely little bundles. We'll get to that. But the steamers are something that I I buy them at the op shop, and I bought ones that will stack. So I've got sort of two or three layers, if I want, above the saucepan, and I can get well all of these little packages in at once because they can be in several different you know um, layers, tiers. And back to where we are. That's a cute little piece of darker coloured linen. I, you know, that that could that ratty little bit of uh, leftovers could could end up the best one. You just don't know. Now you might have a little bit of camera shake here. I'm sorry, but um, I tried to get rid of as much of it as I could. Isn't it a stunning colour? The wattle. It really does catch your eye. Okay, so we're getting near the end of my experimentation now. My little, my little bundles are, are all being wrapped. I've got quite a few to try on different things. I've got some plain cotton and linens and things. Here they are. And you can see, look through it, you can see the wattle there. I think that's a good start because I, I think that I might be getting a bit of colour already. Not sure. It'll change completely once it's steamed. So, oh yes, look at my grotty, grotty bottle and stuff. Mm. Look at this. Can you see those tiny little balls? I really am hoping we'll get a decent mark out of those. They are very, very pretty. So here I am. We tie these little bundles up. I just use some string, wrap it around, keep it all together and make it nice and tightly wrapped. I don't mind if things are sticking out the end. Don't they look lovely as they are? This is even before we go through the steaming process. They look cute. So there we are. Some different bundles to try. So we grab the... Uh, <laughs> lovely. We grab the steamer saucepans. Like I was saying. See how I've layered quite a few. I've got four in that one. Three in the other. Maybe even have five there somewhere. We've got all different kinds. See how they stack neatly on top of each other? Now they all stack on top of that saucepan that has the water in with a lid on top. And there they are. Well, we've only just started, so they haven't started to steam yet. But here we go. That's what we're aiming for. And already you can see the colours are starting to bloom through onto the fabric some dark colors there's some purpley colors some greeny colors some browny colors i don't really um know here they are precious little bundles look completely different now now the idea is to let them cool thoroughly and we'll do it tomorrow we'll have a look at them and wash them and unwrap and reveal but i couldn't resist opening one just for a sneak peek and look at that isn't it cute not much yellow but Still very nice. Oops, now I did forget to mention timing. So they were in for uh, an hour, hour and a half, something like that, until I sort of saw that colours were coming through and I liked it and, and that's when I stopped. Next morning now, and I am looking at my lovely bundles, and sometimes the, the side that's down on the pot gets quite black. See that one there? That's just the outside. So this is this is the fun bit. This is like Christmas when you just open them up and you see a glimpse of what you might have. It'll look different once it's rinsed and, and dried, but yeah, this is really exciting.
I see some really nice rusty brown and and greenish colours in this one. It really is quite quite dark there. Hmm. Oh, that was the stick. I'm just going to shake all these bits out. Let's see what we have. Oh, yeah. Yep, I can use that. So what I'm doing is just unwrapping my lovely little bundles. I've got some water happening in the sink there. I've, I'm just going to give them a little rinse first to get, get, uh, get any excess off and, and uh, any fulch that's still in there. And we're speeding this up so that it's not quite so boring for you. Now you do end up with a mound of different <laughs> bits of foliage here. But the fabric, the fabric is just to die for. Look at that. You can see purpley bits in this one. Mm-mm. So whilst I'm doing this, I'll just mention the process from the beginning was I made a nice rust mordant. I also made a bit of a copper one. It was half water and half vinegar with some coppery things um, just sitting in it for a week or two until it coloured up a nice bright blue actually. It was quite pretty. Um, then I also had a rust one and I added the two together. So you saw that I used it in varying ways with the fabric and some foliage doesn't have to be wattle. That was just my new experiment. And I do like that I'm getting thoroughly different colours in it. Um, yes, so that we then wrap it and we tie it and we go through the steaming process. Now we're unwrapping and we're rinsing. Then we'll rinse with uh, some salt. And that helps to set it as well and then um, we will dry them and see what we've ended up with when you do do the steaming and let me warn you again you really should be wearing gloves for all of this um, I believe that it's it's really most poisonous when it's ingested so um, please don't worry about me I haven't drunk any um, but yes wear your gloves and also, when you're steaming it, try and do it, you know, in, in fresh air. If you've got some way to do it outside, that's best. So here I am, and I am rinsing it, and I do have some of the scorched bits and some, some extra bits are coming out. Maybe I could have steamed it for longer, and I wouldn't have had as much, but I'm just going with it. Here's some salt I'm adding to this little bath whilst I'm rinsing. I'll just make sure I've given it a good... A good soak and a swizzle round in here and then I will change the water and I will um, you know rinse it until there's no more color coming out and that's me done <laughs> there's still bits of leaves in there but it's still so interesting all those different you, you can see there, you know, we have completely different markings in some of them. And now they're out on the line to dry. And you can see there's some different variations at once. You can see the leaves in there. I have to go back and check to see. Oh, look at that one. That's the one with the little, the little fronds, the little balls. Very pretty markings. 
you know, it almost looks like um, animal print, doesn't it? Mm, and some sort of clay colours there, ready brown, rusty. Very, very nice. So we'll let it dry now and then we will iron it and have a proper look. So here we are. And this is the very end of the video where we have the reveal. We see what we've made. Oh, look at that. The variations of colour I'm really quite pleased with. No, there's no bright yellow, but there is some gold in some of them. Some green, some brown, some red. It's just beautiful prints, though. Look at these ones with a very pale background and then the actual print. And this one, I thought this would be, you know, a disaster, but um, my mum actually likes this the best. So you just don't know what you're going to get. Now, in person, that one's got a lot of dark greens and, and colours in it. And look at that. That's almost like a reverse print of a leaf. Yeah. It is all just stunning. Well, you can tell what a fan I am. I, I just love these prints. And I can see things in that. You know how you like when you look at clouds or... And see things. I can see things on this. I see faces. I see all kinds of things. I see landscapes a lot. But all of those prints, all of those markings, look at those tiny little dots. It really is special. And you, like I say, you don't know what you'll get until the very end. The pinky colours on this, the pinky browns and it's lovely. There's a leaf. And another reverse kind of leaf. Look at them, they just keep coming. So all in all, I am really excited about these uh, wattle experiments we've done. And I have a huge variation of of different fabrics now to play with. These are very different to the ones that I'd done uh, with the rust dyeing that are predominantly orange and black. There's a lot of variation here. So that's given me a lovely palette to play with. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this. If you have, do press like and subscribe and if you want any um, other links, they're all below where you'll find me. Thanks for watching.